Hi, my name is Antti. I'm the developer of Road to Vostok, which is an upcoming hardcore survival game made with Unity. I usually just want to make devlogs on this channel and focus on the game development, but this topic is really important to me as a developer and for this project overall, so I decided to make a separate video from this. I think one of the core elements of this project is transparency, and this video is not going to be any different. I want to be totally honest, and hopefully I can also provide a bit different approach to this whole Unity conversation that many developers like me are currently forcefully going through, unfortunately. There isn't a quick way to go through this, the topic is really complex in multiple ways, so the solution is not just to use Unreal, have cool graphics and continue with the game. I wish it was this easy, but it really isn't, and I think at the end of this video you understand why. I would like to start by sharing a bit of my background with Unity to give some important context. I've been using Unity for over 11 years, which means over 4000 days working with this software. I became full-time developer for Road to Vostok over a year ago, but before that I was a visual game design teacher and taught Unity development for hundreds of students here in Finland where I currently live. When it comes to game development ecosystem, Unity plays a big role in Finland. Unity is especially important for the mobile game industry here and the majority of the game development schools teach Unity. This basically means that there's a lot of job opportunities, hiring and productions that are naturally formed around Unity. I wanted to highlight this first since Road to Vostok is located in Finland and there's certain aspects that are important when it comes to local skills and collaborations. When it comes to my personal skills as a developer, I do have some experience in most of the game engines out there. But there's no denying that I've been using Unity for most of my professional career and it's been an important part of my daily life for a long time. I was introduced to Unity first time in 2012 and here's my first game that I made with this engine. This piece of art is my first attempt to make games but my skills were just capable of spelling my name with some random Unity tree tools. But you got to start from something. The timestamp shows 1.41 am April 22nd 2012. So typical indie developer working hours already from the beginning, I guess. After this experiment, I started my game development journey and I decided that I will learn everything about this cool piece of software called Unity. I started by learning all kinds of engine features and skills like 3D modeling, shaders and programming and after a few years even ended up becoming a Unity asset store publisher and started making some money by selling assets with Unity. Here's an image of one of my old Unity payments that I received while I was working as an asset store publisher and these were actually my first income sources from the game industry. Even though the income was pretty small, I still remember it provided a huge motivation boost for me, since I worked really hard for learning all those new skills and now suddenly there were people who were willing to pay for those skills and overall the possibilities with Unity seemed almost endless. During this time I even decided to upgrade my engine license because back then they had a limited edition t-shirt available for those who decided to upgrade their license to thing called Unity Plus. And the funny thing is, I didn't even look at the upgrade features. I just wanted the t-shirt because I was so proud of being a Unity developer. If you're curious, here's an image of the t-shirt that I still have. It's been a long time since this moment, but in general, I think that there was this golden age of being a Unity developer back then, and I think many other Unity developers would agree with this. If we fast forward a little, I started becoming really professional with Unity around 2017 and I also started using daily routines and workflows around other tools that I really liked for game development. I basically formed my entire development skills around Unity and other softwares called Blender and Substance Painter. Blender is an open source 3D modeling software run by an independent Blender foundation and Substance Painter was this revolutionary 3D texturing tool made by an independent French company called Allegorithmic. It was smooth sailing and daily routines for multiple years straight, but I think my first awakening came around 5 years ago, when Adobe suddenly bought Substance Painter and its company Allegorithmic, and it raised multiple concerns around the 3D artist community. This so-called awakening break those daily routines for a while, and it introduced me the feeling of uncertainty when working with these development softwares for the first time. After this event, it was obvious to me that this industry will always include uncertainty and there's sudden changes every now and then, and there's pretty much nothing you can do about it, except adapt and maybe diversify your skill sets. There have been multiple events like this during all these years when I've been making games, and there's a reason why uncertainty is one of the main threats when you're working in this industry. The simple reason is because you are using technology that is not made by you. It has been made by some company, 
and sometimes these companies have different values than you do. This is basically what has happened with Unity lately. Once again, there's a big wave of uncertainty when the software company has different goals and values than its users. And every developer who has been in this industry for long enough will know that this cycle will unfortunately keep repeating and repeating. One thing that is really important in this context is that each time when these events happen, it always affects the whole ecosystem related to the software, not just single individuals. Sometimes the impact is fairly small, the trust is easy to rebuild, and sometimes not. This is a good transition to start talking about the current situation with Unity and what worries me personally the most about these recent events. Here's a rough sketch about the ecosystem of game engine related software company. On the top level, there's the company who makes the software, there's leadership, employees and other company members. Then, if we look at the other branches of this ecosystem, there's developers, studios and multiple other important elements like schools, programs, event organizers, industrial applications and so on. Behind every game engine related software company, there's usually ecosystems like these. And these are formed just like a tree. When the ecosystem is healthy, it keeps growing and each branch benefits from other branches and overall there's a good flow of opportunities for all. However, this works other way around also. When the ecosystem is not healthy and you introduce enough uncertainty, there's a risk of damaging of these branches and it will cause unstability eventually for the whole ecosystem. But there's one key ingredient to this whole thing and that's new users. New users are the ones who are going to schools to learn about these complex softwares they are the main demand for the beginner YouTube tutorials and online courses. New users are the ones who are often purchasing assets from the asset stores. And eventually new users are the ones who are providing the workforce to the studios that are using these softwares. And how do I know this? Well, I was a new user once and I did exactly this. And when I was working as a game development teacher, I watched how hundreds of new users, meaning students, did exactly this. Now the key question is, how new users make the decision to learn about these complex softwares and dedicate their time, money and sometimes careers on these ecosystems. I think answer to this question is quite simple and straightforward. Most of them just seek information online and form their decisions based on what they find, just like I did over 11 years ago. Let's take one practical example. If I was a total beginner, excited about learning game engines and would like to know more about Unity for example, after a few minutes of searching information and using these common search terms, I would find something like this. Would I like to know more about Unity's easy to learn engine features, extensive asset store, content creators, tutorials, or the awesome community that has formed around this software? The answer is probably no. I turn right away because of the negative first impressions. This situation is called long-term damage, and it's highly related to brand value and feeling of trust that happens especially on the root level of this ecosystem. As a former game development teacher who has seen how this root level works for multiple years and helping new Unity beginners to find these other branches, I feel really sad for one specific reason. If you forget about the company leadership and look at the ecosystem as a whole, Unity is still one of the best tools and environments to make video games. There's awesome people working with the engine, the engine itself is fun to use, there's massive amount of talented content creators and helpful resources for the beginners and so on. It has taken really, really long time to grow these branches and opportunities, but the sad reality is that if the new user is turned around at the root level with negative feelings, it will never get a chance to look at the whole ecosystem. It will just go somewhere else and eventually there's less opportunities for everyone and that creates the general feeling of instability and uncertainty. I can't speak for other Unity developers, but for me, this long-term damage is what I'm most worried about. So, is there some solution to fix this? Can Unity rebuild the trust, especially for the new users, and will there be stability for years to come? The honest answer is that I have no idea. Since I don't own the software, I'm not the one who's rebuilding the trust, and what's most scary, as a developer, I have zero control over this whole thing. This long-term damage will probably take years to fully show the true damage that this recent event caused. For some game studios, that's a good thing, since their production cycles already end before that. But for me, there's no other production cycles. I'm planning to make this project a career-long thing, so I would definitely feel the impacts eventually. On some level, I would like to stick with Unity, 
and try to help rebuild that trust somehow, even though I don't have any control. But there's one sacred thing that prevents me from doing that. The reason why I quit two careers over this game development journey, the reason why I'm willing to work ridiculous hours for this project, is simply because I'm having fun. Even if there were zero wishlists for this game, zero followers, and zero comments on these videos, I would still be making this game since it's fun for me and I truly enjoy it. But now, for the first time in my game development career, there's something that's interfering that fun. And it's this Unity situation and multiple side effects that are really complex to explain. At the end of the day, if you're not having fun, what's the point? I think this is the most important signal for me that it's time to move on and detach myself and this project from this Unity situation and switch to another engine. Now, before we start talking about those other engines, I still want to emphasize three really important points. The first point is that if you're interested about game engines or game development and you're watching this video, Unity is still a really good game engine. And like mentioned multiple times before, the community and the resources around the engine are totally awesome. So, don't rule Unity out just by these recent events or any of my personal concerns. Nowadays, it's really important to diversify your skill sets, so it's not a bad idea to learn maybe a couple of engines and Unity can totally be one of those. The second point is that if you're currently making games with Unity, so you're a game developer and you're watching this video, please remember that this whole engine switch topic is a really personal thing, and for many projects and games it might be totally wise to stick with Unity. Basically what I'm trying to say here is that nobody knows the future. There's no crystal ball to predict winners or losers in this engine topic. So make decisions based on your calculated opinions, and if you're having fun, that's awesome and there's no need to switch anything. The third and the final point is that if you're a Unity employee and you're watching this video, which is probably the most unlikely thing of these three, I just want to say that many of us developers really appreciate your work, and many of our careers are made possible by you. So thank you, and remember that nobody is mad about you or your work, it's actually quite the opposite. Okay, now let's start talking about what would be the best new home for Road to Vostok. This first part of the video was maybe a little sad, maybe a little dramatic, but now it's all about positivity, since I have already moved way beyond from dwelling about this unity thing, and I'm actually really excited to get back to normal development routines, and overall I see so many upsides that will come with this engine switch. I will now go through the main analysis process that I did last week, so you get a behind the scenes look on what it takes to decide something like porting your game to another engine. The first phase of this analysis is calculating so called port window. Port window is basically trying to find out if it's even reasonable to switch engines. In other words, you roughly calculate the amount of time that it would take to port your game to another engine. This port window is linked to the game's production cycle, and the formula here is really simple. Basically, the further your game is in this production cycle, the harder to port is, because content-wise, there's more stuff to switch, migrate, rebuild, and so on. Well, last week, I calculated and analyzed all the 3D models, textures, audio files, code complexity, features, levels, UI elements, and all the core things that are currently in Road to Vostok. After this, I came to the conclusion that Road to Vostok is currently located somewhere here when it comes to this port window. This basically means that it's still totally possible to port this game to another engine, and when it comes to actual port time, it would be somewhere between 2 to 3 months. For those who would argue that I should still stick with Unity, this port window is one of the key elements in this decision. If I would wait, let's say, another year, and then I would decide to switch engines, I would be well beyond of this green zone, and the porting time would be exponentially more time-consuming and difficult. Then, the next analysis phase for me was prototyping and comparing different engines, and there were basically only two viable options for this. Option 1 was Godot, which is a free and open source game engine, and option 2 was Unreal Engine, which most of you probably already know. I started with Unreal, and to be specific, Unreal 5.3, and it actually took me one whole day to even download the engine. After this, I studied most of the learning templates, did some custom FPS experiments, and eventually started learning about the Blueprint system, which is a big part of the Unreal Engine. Once I started understanding the basics, I also did few procedural environments and tested the overall rendering performance. In total, I think I spent around 30 hours with Unreal, and maybe a few extra hours on watching tutorials, learning about C++ programming language, 
and researching about the asset pipelines and so on. My conclusion with Unreal is that the marketing phrase in this image doesn't lie. Unreal is by far the world's most advanced 3D game engine and it's battle tested by hundreds of big productions. So, if you're interested about commercial game engines and cutting edge graphics, Unreal is probably the best choice for many developers and studios who are thinking about porting their game to another engine. However, for me, the if is really important in this previous phrase. If you're interested about commercial engines and if you're interested about cutting edge graphics. Thanks to this recent Unity situation, my trust towards commercial game engines is at all time low, even though Unreal has been really trustworthy so far, and I personally even like their leadership, meaning the current CEO. And when it comes to cutting edge graphics, my way of making game graphics is based on these simple photo textures, traveling to abandoned places, using some old school techniques, since I'm a big fan of visuals like in Stalker games for example. So, let's look at Godot now and see how it would maybe work for games like Road to Vostok. I downloaded the Godot engine also last week, and this time the engine download took less than 10 seconds and there was just one executable file, so I was ready to start experimenting with the engine right away. When I open up the editor for the first time, I noticed right away that Godot is, maybe the right word here is simple or straightforward, but most importantly it was quite similar with Unity, since most of the naming, UI elements and workflows seem pretty intuitive to me without watching any tutorials or reading the actual engine documentation. Once I understand how Godot works in terms of nodes and scenes, I started coding right away, since I had prior experience both in C-sharp and Python, so the scripting in Godot started feeling really natural within few hours. After this, I set up few procedural spawners and tested the 3D rendering performance, since that was one of the main concerns that I had with this engine. Based on my initial tests, and if you know what you're doing with optimization, I was positively surprised that Godot can fairly easily handle games like Road to Vostok when it comes to 3D performance. In total, I think I have now spent around 40 hours with Godot, maybe 10 hours of that was initial learning, but the rest of the time, so about 2 days, I spent on making this small test build and ported some of the Road to Vostok features to see how the actual porting process would feel like. Here's a few video clips of the test build that I made in about 2 days with Godot. Godot is not anywhere near perfect. It's still a bit rough, there are small issues here and there, but it has all the main features that I and this project needs, it's intuitive to use, at least for me, and most importantly, there's nothing that interferes with that fun of making video games. If we look at the softwares that I've been using for game development during my 11 years of making games, there have been one software that has been by far the most reliable, supported, and provided stability unlike any other. That software is that little orange thing called Blender, which was that free and open source 3D modeling tool run by Blender Foundation. Back in the day, when Blender started becoming popular, it was not perfect. It was actually pretty rough to use, but thanks to its open source nature and dedicated community, Blender is today one of the most used 3D modeling tool in the whole industry. It has by far the largest amount of resources, tutorials, content creators and plugins and it's been used in schools all over the world, bringing new users to its ecosystem every day. And this brings stability and opportunities for everyone. There's a good possibility that Godot becomes the blender of game engines. And that's the main reason why I'm more than happy to support this software and take a risk by porting into our Road to Vostok game to Godot. In this context, I would like to point out that even if you're a fan of Unity, fan of Unreal or any other commercial game engine, 
you still want that Godot becomes widely used and successful alternative. Without these alternatives, there's no competition, there's a risk of making real monopoly positions for certain engines and their companies, especially after this Unity thing. So, what does this Godot port mean for Road to Vostok in terms of timelines? Well, let's first look where I left with this project before this whole Unity mess. My main goal for this year was to release this thing called Public Demo 2. I worked really hard for this demo, I had big plans for it, and before the Unity situation, this is where I was with the demo content. I was basically <laughs> two weeks away from releasing this demo, and I had nearly all elements in place to reach that big milestone. So basically only thing that was missing was the trailer and some minor features. Last week, this thing was not so funny, but now it's pretty funny considering how unexpected things can suddenly happen and ruin otherwise a perfect plan. Now I'm sure some of you might think why not just release this new demo and start porting after that. That's a really good question and trust me, I went through all these scenarios while I was making this engine switch decision. The problem with that approach is that this public demo 2 is probably at least 5 times bigger than the public demo 1 when it comes to overall game content and features. This means that there's at least 5 times more bugs and unexpected things that might happen since there's no way that single developer can test all the edge cases whether it's related to unexpected hardware issues or feature related issues. So the right way to release that demo would need constant support and making sure you categorize, test and fix those bugs as you go in order to make sure there's no broken product on the Steam page making harm for the entire game reputation. So that approach would put me into a situation where I would need to use two engines at the same time I would use Unity to fix the ongoing bugs and support the public demo too, and at the same time I would be using Godot and making that engine switch. I think that situation would be mentally really really hard to manage, and there would be a risk that this whole Godot port timeline would stretch and cause problems to further development goals. And since the main point of this whole video is to have fun while developing games, I think releasing the public demo too, and by doing that putting me to this two engine limbo state would fight against that mentality. So here's what we are going to do instead. I will start this full-scale Godot port today and each week I'm going to post some updates on how this port is progressing. I will be also sharing weekly Godot builds on Patreon since I need some testing help with certain performance and hardware related things. Based on my calculations, it will take me around 2 to 3 months to port all the core features of Road to Vostok to Godot and this means that I will be releasing a new public demo on Steam at the end of this year that will be running on Godot. I will be calling that build as Public Demo 1 version 3 or something like Public Demo 1 Godot Edition and I think it will be really valuable to get that engine related feedback from you since there's hardly any survival FPS project yet running on Godot. This is also the reason why I will be documenting this whole port process, taking notes and eventually when you have the chance to test that next demo with Godot I will make an in-depth article from this initial experience and I will share that to the Godot community and hopefully it will even help the engine when it comes to these realistic shooter games. Once that first Godot demo is done and I've seen how this engine behaves with different hardware and setups, I will start the preparations for the public demo 2 in Godot which will be that big game loop demo for this project. So that's the current plan. I think it's totally doable for me and a smart way to transition to this new engine. I hope you support my decision when it comes to this engine switch. I truly think it's the right one for me and for this project in the long run and I'm really excited about this new beginning with Godot. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video.